Hi, my name is Jim Bowden, and welcome to the Uncertainty Center. In today's program, we're going to be talking about how to run legacy software on newer operating systems. And uh, this video, I'm explaining how to get the Bean Machine up and running, but uh, legacy software means any old software, so this should help you get uh, older programs to run if you have them. And like all the talks that I do, uh, I have PDFs available at uncertainty.center or uncertaintycenter.com and just click on a computer tab and then select uh, running legacy software and you can download it. And before we get going, if you have tried to install the Beam Machine program or any program that you're trying to install, you need to uninstall it before reinstalling it. And Another thing we need to know before get go before we get going is uh, whether you have 32 or 64 bit operating system and let me go back and all you need to do is uh, click on the site that I provided here and it's a Microsoft site and you can just scroll down and it'll tell you if you're running a 32 or 64 bit operating system. If you have a 32 bit operating system you can uh, install a program Fairly, sim fairly simple. I've described on the next two slides how to do it. Uh, during the install process on a Bean Machine, you'll get a screen that looks like this. And on there, you'll see uh, where it's trying to install it. The directory, destination directory, is C colon backslash program files backslash BMW, or it's the program files is uh, giving you the problem. The newer operating systems uh, with multiple users. Uh, really change the way that program file directory works. And so the way around it is just get rid of the program files and change the destination directory, in our case, to C colon backslash BMW. After you've made that change, uh, if you're running a 32-bit operating system, should run for you. And the BM Bean Machine does. What do you do if you're running a 64-bit operating system? Well, the answer is simple. Just run it on a 32-bit operating system using what's called a virtual machine. And you can think of a virtual machine as just a program that loads in, and it loads in a 32-bit operating system, and then it is able to run your program in that 32-bit operating system. So you really have two operating systems going. Here's a couple examples of what it might look like. Okay, I'm on on the desktop and what I'm going to do is open up Oracle VirtualBox and Oracle VirtualBox is an open source program and open source generally means free and in this case it is free uh, piece of software and this is where you generate your virtual machines and as you can see I've got a list of virtual machines that I've generated and I'm going to open up one of them now uh, just by double clicking on it and it takes a few seconds um, because I'm in this case I'm loading in XP and uh, that went pretty quick and I'm on my uh, XP desktop now and as you can see that I've already loaded in the Bean Machine so let's double click it to start it and here we have the start button and let's start it up and see how it runs and as you can see it runs very fast it's uh, as fast as anything I've seen uh, run out of the Bean Machine so it, as far as speed, it works very good. Let's look at it one more time. Um, and two things I was looking for uh, out of a virtual machine is one was speed and the other is what it looked like. And as you can see, the outer box, this is uh, what the virtual machine will look like here. And it looks fine. Nothing wrong with it. So that looks fine running XP. So we'll uh, exit out of there and... Uh, close the machine down. This is like powering off the machine. So we power it off and let's go back and now I'm going to uh, fire up a Windows 8.1 32-bit machine. And this one is uh, a much bigger operating system. It's going to take a while for it to load. Um, it takes uh, 30 seconds or so to get it to load. So I'm going to shut, uh, cut a section out here. I'll be back in a second. Okay, uh, got it going here. Let me click on this, and it wants my password. And 
and put that in there. Okay, it's brought me up to my start screen in Windows 8.1. As you can see, it's a full 8.1. And here is my desktop button. I'm going to click on that. And I'm now on my desktop. And as you can see, I've loaded the Bean Machine here. Let's double click on it. There's my button. We'll start it up. And let's see how it runs. And as you can see, it runs fine. It's a little bit slower than what we saw in the XP, but not much. It runs fine. Clear it out and try it again. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good speed wise. And if we look at the overall looks of it, it looks identical to uh, what we were seeing in the XP mode. So this looks fine too. And again, the XP mode is the, the slimmest and what I would consider the lowest cost. This would be uh, running it on Oracle VirtualBox would be uh, still a low cost, but your operating system will cost a little bit of money, uh, but it's slower. Uh, there are other ways to run it out of Hyper-V, which is Microsoft's VirtualBox manager, and uh, but that would be more expensive. So, But anyways, this is what I consider worst case, and it runs fine. So we can uh, close this down and power off the machine, and we can get out of our or Oracle VirtualBox Manager. So there you have it, comparing the two, uh, what I would consider extreme cases, and uh, they work fine. So uh, let's go back to the slideshow. OK, here's what you need uh, to get going. You need a, First, you need an operating system, and that operating system can be uh, XP, Vista, Windows 7 or 8, but it does have to be a 32-bit operating system. <clears throat> and uh, my suggestion on what to use is easy. If you want to use XP, then if you have Windows 7 Pro, it comes with software called Virtual PC, and it has XP mode on it, just simply you can use that. It's uh, that easy, and I'll show you how to do that in the next video. Um, otherwise, use Oracle's VirtualBox. Um, if you want to run Windows 7 or 8, 32-bit, and if you're running Windows 8 Pro or greater, the Ultimate uh, Edition, you can use Hyper-V because it comes with the Pro Otherwise, uh, use Oracle's VirtualBox. And where do you get the operating system at? Well, you might have it. Uh, you know, what you need to do is go through and check your old CDs, DVDs, looking for past copies that you may have purchased. Uh, you want to look for OEM disk and the bottom of a laptop disk. I went through uh, my software and I found uh, OEM uh, copy. And this is really, if you could find an OEM version that maybe came with a computer that has the 25-digit uh, code on it. That's, that would really be a great way to start. Uh, I also found a copy that came with the HP computer, and this one has the 25-character uh, code on it embedded right on a CD, and that works pretty good. Um, you can. I ran across this one. It's uh, Windows XP. This one happened to be an upgrade disk. Upgrade disks aren't the best thing in the world because the, what it's going to do, it's going to ask you to show that you uh, have another version of Windows. Uh, and so you have to prove to them you have an older version on your machine, which really isn't that hard. In the case, I tried it, and I just stuck my Windows 98 uh, CD in there and it said, okay, now put this disk back in and we'll continue, and it worked fine. I also uh, found uh, Windows 7 Home Premium that I had, and this is a upgrade edition, so I would have to show that I had XP already on there. And you can look at the bottom of the laptop computers. Here, I'll turn it upside down. And they'll usually have a code right on here that uh, gives you that 25 character key. Uh, the problem is is that you need uh, a CD or DVD to get going. Update disk, like I said, normally they won't work because you got to have the prior version to get it going. Um, and you need both the disk and uh, 25 character key unless you happen to have 
a disc that's got the 25 character key embedded on it and um, if you happen to have an OEM disc that uh, any key that you have that is the full version key and not an upgrade should work on that OEM disc. If you can't find an operating system uh, in your disc then you can search online but you really really have to be careful you want to make sure that what you buy has a 25 character key what's called a COA it's a certificate of authenticity and that it includes a disc and you want to make sure it's not an upgrade copy unless you happen to have an older version than the XP you know it's really a pain trying to go through all of this but in the long run virtual machines are going to be around and uh, you're going to see them uh, you'll be able to run like the Android operating system on them and uh, you know Mac users have been using them for quite a while they run Windows programs on them so you're going to see virtual machines around for a while and this just gives you uh, a chance to get going on it before other people do okay let's talk about your computer and the stuff that's needed and your computer the physical computer is called a host computer and the virtual machine is called a guest computer that's the, just the terminology they use the host computer requirements are it should be running a 64-bit operating system you know, if you had a 32-bit operating system you could just run the programs directly on there so it wouldn't make sense uh, the computer CPU should be an Intel i5, i7, or AMD V, and that's because uh, it needs what's called virtualization, and so it needs a specific processor. If the host computer doesn't have it, then you can use Oracle VirtualBox because it uses software virtualization, and you can get around it. I'm not sure how it would work. Uh, it says it will, so it probably does and let's see you need to know the amount of RAM installed on your computer and I've got a link here that you can click on and uh, it'll take you to a Microsoft site and what it does it tells you what operating system you're running and if you scroll down it's got uh, four different links that depending on the operating system it shows you uh, you can click on the link and then it'll give you the description on how to go through to find out how much memory you have so there is a way of easily finding that. Uh, then you need to know how much free hard drive space that uh, you have and to do that just open up File Explorer and right click on either the local uh, disk C it might be defined as that or drive C it's sometimes called C drive uh, and then click on the properties and it should give you the amount of free space that you have. At this point you should know the amount of RAM and the amount of free space you have on your hard drive. Uh, the host computer requirements, your physical computer changes on what the guest, the requirements for the uh, physical computer change depending on what guest operating system that you want to use. Uh, for example, if you want to run an XP on your guest machine, your host needs at least 4 gigabytes of RAM and an extra 10 gigabytes of spare hard drive space. Uh, if you're going to use Vista, Windows 7, or Windows 8 on there, the host system needs uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM and a spare 20 gigabytes of hard drive space. When you have uh, your operating uh, system that you want to use and enough RAM and enough disk space, then you're ready to create a virtual machine. And all you have to do is click on the link below, How to Create a Virtual Machine. And I have a video put together that will walk you through step by step on how to create a virtual machine. Thank you.